All right, let's turn our attention to the biggest surprise in the NBA, the Memphis Grizzlies. Y'all have heard me talking about them on this show for weeks now. The Grizzlies are 6-1 and one since losing Mike Conley to a back injury. Marcus Gasol just named Western Conference Player of the Week. And let's give it up, new coach David Fisdale. Yes. Tremendous job. Young get- makeshift lineup that beat the Warriors by 21 points. I mean, look, guys, 17-8. and eight. Memphis, they're not winning the title here, but they are fifth place in the West. That, how are they winning like this when we're looking at teams we expected to do better and they're not matching up with this depleted roster? Makeshift lineup is generous. <laughs> I don't know what, like they do, but they, this is crazy. They do this every year. They're 13 and one in games that have been within three points in the last three minutes. That's like so much better than anyone else. It's crazy. And this is like, Three coaches, five or six years, they yeah. win every close game every year. I got to give it up to Fizz because he's with Mike Conley being out of this lineup. I mean, he's putting guys in a position to excel, and they're playing great basketball. They're they're a physical team, yeah. and I got to give a shout out to my fossil cousin. He's still holding on. <laughs> oh, cousin, that <laughs> Every once in a while, he revs it up. Every yeah, once in yeah, a while, he's looking good this year. <laughs> That's good. Who, by the way? Older than you, yes. still playing. Just wow. You gotta come back wow. to that. Vince, you, you got some big support over <laughs> here, bro. Right. See, I gotta refer him. He's not here Good to defend gosh, himself. Man. So come on. I do wanna talk about your old team, though, Tracy. Uh-oh. Orlando, the Magic haven't made the playoffs since 2012. The team holds the second worst record in the league over that span. Behind only, yes, the Sixers, who purposely tanked all those seasons away. But hey, have no fear, Magic fans. CEO Alex Martins has some good news for you. I mean, <laughs> sort of. Um, he told the Orlando Sentinel, quote, I certainly believe by 2030, you're reading that right, we will have won at least one championship. And I say at least, I firmly believe we're going to get there. And once you get there, you got the kind of team that hopefully can come back. So, um, shout out to <laughs> 2030, eh? We're like going out on a limb with that one. Take over, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> what is the point of this? <laughs> 35-year-old Mario Huzoni is going to lead you to the 2030 championship? Like, what is the point of saying this? Any team could say Aaron this. Gordon, and by, and Aaron least. Gordon by 2030 might, you yeah. know, develop a jumper. I mean, you know. Wow. I mean, no, I'm just saying. I mean, he, he's a great dunker. Yes. I, mean, I need just, him to shoot the ball. Maybe you know, by Seattle 2030, man. he has a, a lot of time to improve. Man. Look, man, if, if I'm a player on this team, <laughs> I have high hopes. <laughs> We're going to win a championship in the next. No. He said at least. He went, look, they haven't won one. Winning one championship is hard. How about drop the at least? Okay, but we criticize. I'm going to just, I'm going to try to play. I'm going to try to play devil's advocate here. We criticize when people talk up their team too much, right? Especially, I mean, you know, damn, like Golden State. There was like a can, little can criticism say, for being over ambitious. 20. 20 at least? Get five year span? I mean, I tried. Geez. I did everything I could. I 20, 30? <laughs> so we just coming into training camp. I mean, our expectations in the next five years, we ain't going to be crap. <laughs> we, can't, we ain't compete for nothing. In, in all seriousness, how far away do you think the Magic are from being competitive for playoff position? Long. In Eastern, Long. To get the eighth seed in yeah. the Eastern Conference? Yeah. I mean, I Long think you get it this year. Way. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> I mean, to get the eighth seed is like. Just go get beat up by Cole. Oh, just to make the matter. playoffs? Yeah, make the it's playoffs. Easy. If yeah, you were a fan in Orlando, that's, that would be nice. It would be great. That's what yeah. they want to do. Right? Frank Vogel's a good I mean, coach. Yeah, that but that, that roster, man, I, I actually think I can make that roster. But Seriously. he did not say, I think we could get a couple of playoff I, appearances back. by 2030. He said a couple of titles. I can give you like 15 minutes. <laughs> and then, in today's game, I'll give you like 10 points. See, and, and he means it. You would need to pay him. What if, they sent, what if they sent you to the D-League like Zonia? The hell They no, have five man. officials there now, that. so you'd be all good. No. I'll be like Boogie. I have so many times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got to take a quick break. But first, here's our distant replay from this date in 2001. Oh, we got a Darius Miles sighting. Are you kidding me? Ooh. Bump the forehead. Oh, yeah. 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 Deep in the video book. Darius Miles is probably the light of the New York Mafia. 30 right now. Like 340. Ouch. Ouch. Back with us because we are going to try to stay on this show longer than Luke Walton made it into the Lakers-Kings <laughs> game last night. Yep. Walton ejected just eight minutes into the festivities. Take a look. Four three. Did you see the non-call? We got a technical on Luke Walton, and he is close to being tossed. Yeah. We got to get him out of the official's yeah. way here. He might get tossed. Demarcus wrapped up Julius, and then he's out. He's down. Gone. Luke. 
Luke Walton, a lot of opinions on the referee's mother there. And by the way, I love how he takes off his jacket, right, as he leaves the court. How awesome is that? Now, here is why Walton was upset. Boogie Cousins tangles up Julius Randle, doesn't get called for it. It's not that, I mean, yeah, mm. well, when you on a seven-game losing, <laughs> losing streak, streak. Yeah. right? And these things get you upset. These two players, they also went at it the last time these teams met. So Randall said the fact that Walton stood up for him this time meant a tremendous amount to him. Of course, it didn't mean enough that the Lakers actually won this basketball game. In fact, they got outscored 39-13 to in the third quarter. 39 to 13. I mean, that is hard to do against anyone. It is really hard to do against the Kings. Sacramento even trolled LA on Twitter last night. Yeah, that's not harsh or anything. Mm. And afterward, Walton said, quote, I felt like for the first time this season, we gave in. We gave up, which is disheartening because our group has been very resilient all year long. Look, this was the Lakers' seventh straight loss, which wouldn't be surprising for last year's Lakers, who only won 17 games total. But it is surprising for this year's Lakers, who showed us in the first month of the season how good they really could be. Heck, at one point, D'Angelo Russell and Nick Young were even talking about how they could be a playoff team. We started to expect more from them. They started to expect more from themselves, which in turn feels like that might be the problem. When things started to fall apart, instead of treating it like an inevitable bump in the road for a young team, some of the Lakers have been acting like the sky is falling. They've been disconnected, easily frustrated, or as we saw last night, sometimes just giving up entirely. Now, do I think Luke Walton can fix this? Yeah, the Lakers are on a road trip at the perfect time. Being forced to be together, to face each other, that's the best medicine for a losing streak. But it is something that needs fixing. Part of being a young team is learning how to handle losing so it doesn't snowball. And the Lakers clearly aren't there yet. Guys, I mean, what do you think? Tracy, are the Lakers who we thought they were at the beginning of the season or are they who you thought they were all along? <laughs> no, um, this I think what happened was D'Angelo Russell went out. In the beginning of the season, you had your whole team. You had, they were healthy. You, you found some chemistry within your group. Um, D'Angelo Russell missed a significant amount of time and you kind of lost that. Like you, you didn't have that rhythm. You had to replace him with other guys and that same rhythm and the chemistry was just broken. Um, now they lost a lot of steam here lately. They got to find some way to get that back because I still believe they are that team that can be exciting, um, be in games, and, and compete every night. They don't have that right now. Again, we don't want that to snowball, have a snowball effect of what's going on right now. You hit it on the head. You know, you said they're a young team. They're learning to lose. They're learning to deal with adversity. That's all normal. Like, mm-hmm. the 10 and 10 start brainwashed everyone to think <laughs> it's a playoff team. They're way ahead of schedule. Like, they hit a bump Calm in the road. Down. They had a couple of injuries. Like, they were horrible on defense then. They're horrible on defense now. <laughs> let's they're all really bad on defense. Let's all just yeah. relax. The Lakers are going to be fine. Julius Randle's in a little slump. He'll uptick. You know, the free agent signings haven't really worked out. That's a bigger issue. But, like, they're fine. They're fine. They're a young team finding their way. It, it might help if their coach could stay in the game a little bit longer. I think Luke, even though he was glad he made the point, he might agree with that. But it wasn't just him with the text. Los Angeles actually picked up six texts total last night, which leads to our favorite soap opera. As the game turns. Oh, buddy. It's a daily show. It's a daily show. I don't make it a daily show. The Sacramento Kings make it a daily show because Boogie Cousins also picked up a tech of his own. This was for trash talking Brian Shaw in front of one of the officials. And, and look, afterward, Boogie said he thought it was an overreaction. A little soap opera, maybe uh, overreaction for the text officials. For that there. Right there? He did get an attack. He thinks that he is getting unfairly targeted. Quote, it's been a while since I've just went up to a ref and cursed him out, which apparently good, he thinks. Good, 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 Boogie. Um, so I really don't know what to do. I see how some guys talk to the refs, and it's okay. And then there's me. It just depends on their mood. So, Tracy, He's learning, this latest guys. episode of As Sacramento Turns, yeah. this, how do you feel? Well, how I feel is this is Boogie's history catching up to him. You know, uh, how he's treated refs in the, in the past, showing them up. They don't. They never forget that. So Talk when it, Rasheed Wallace. So when an event occurs like it did last night, it's always going to catch up to you. Boogie <laughs> calls a lot of this on himself. Now he seems like he's learning from it. You know, he said he's having he went up to a, a ref and cursed. Like, yeah. Actually, cursed at them. You so, a little work. Hey, he's learning. Brownie, cupcake. 
Yeah. Are there any other plot plot elements in this soap opera, or is it just the same no. one over and over again? Now, let's stay in the season, same game, baby. because I got, I got a bunch of them. The, the call that was on Randall, Boogie should have been called for a foul on that. Let's right. just be honest, and right. you know, they let him get away with that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I do have to point out, this was his ninth pack of the season. That puts him on pace for 28 yeah. checks this Go season. for it. Go for 30. We know, of course, she got many more than that back in the day, but back then there wasn't the penalty right. the league has now. Now... Once you hit 16, you get suspended, and then you start getting suspended for every other tech yeah. after that. So if he actually did stay on pace, this 28 tech a season pace, you are talking about one of the teams in the NBA losing its inarguably best player for so many games. That can't happen. It can't, it can't continue like this way. It, Something's got to give. It's not going to continue that way. He'll get up to 14, 15, and then he'll calm down a little bit, and he'll <laughs> say, look, I can do it. See, I can do See, it. And I we'll have didn't this. curse and, anyone And then out. we'll have the same plot element again on mm-hmm. as Sacramento Returns, Returns or whatever exactly. it's called. Bring the music back. No, no, no. Just kidding. All right. Well, there may be more reps on the court to give Boogie, Boogie those texts. You haven't factor that into your equation, Zach Lowe. True. The NBA is going to experiment in that direction, starting in the D-League, where a handful of games will feature four- and five-person crews instead of the usual three. The league says this is in an effort to, quote, collect data on how this would work. <laughs> Come on, man. What's next, yo? Oh, this is... Boy. This is- Please tell me you're not riding with me. Look, I'm fine. I, it's the D League. Try it's, anything. Try 12 foot hoops. Try six, D-League, on six. Yeah. I don't care. D League, I don't care. You can implement four, yeah, four right. pointers and five pointers in the D League. 40 minute games? Don't whatever. bring this into our game. This, the, the court is already crowded with three refs and the 10 players out there. Come on, man. There's some feeling that things would get called more correctly in that way players would what be What the hell we got this to replay for? <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Here's the, I agree with you. I don't know where these guys are going to stand. They're going to have different alignments. It's going to get crowded. But you can't, the instant replay, like, all that stuff is next day stuff, like the flopping funds. Oh, next day, the technical that's upgraded to a flagrant two, whatever. That's next day. They need in-game stuff, in-game penalties, instant penalties. I don't know what the numbers are, whether whether calls from officials are up or down this year. I will only say that from a feel eye test point, when you watch games, it feels like a lot of games are getting interrupted, that there isn't as much flow as you would like them to be. It is difficult to think of when adding another official is somehow going to improve that. But, you know, you do want Over accuracy. officiating So, I don't, I don't know. Doc, I was at the Clippers game. You were at the Clippers game last night. You remember Doc Rivers said prior to the game, someone asked him about this. He goes, I liked it better when there were only two officials. I got away with a lot more. So, <laughs> I think some guys would like yeah. to see us As move back player, in that direction. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's move on to a game that's coming up tonight. Timberwolves Bulls. And you can see that right here on ESPN. It's got juice, baby. This is Coach Tom Thibodeau's return to face the team that fired him. But it's not exactly going to be a triumphant stroll through the doors now, is it? Despite having a roster stacked with young talent, Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, the Wolves are on a three-team tie for the worst record in the league at 6-18. And, and Zach, look, when the beginning they were having trouble at the start of the season, we were all like, hey, it's a package of gel and they're young. Is there a point where past the quarter mark they are oh, underachieving? We're, we're past Tibbs it. Tibbs has to take I, some responsibility. I, I think, look, I think they're underachieving, right? But I, the expectations were wildly out of control. Their three top minutes guys are 21 years old. Like, you just don't win in the NBA with teams like this. Their bench stinks. We all knew their bench would stink. I will say, though, I do think it's disappointing. Like, Carl Anthony Towns has not been any strides on defense. He might have even slid back. Like, I mean, he it, has a coach that's supposed to be an expert in that. It, it, is it the coach's responsibility to connect more? It is the coach's responsibility because when Tibbs were, was in Chicago, that was the Bulls' identity. They were a tough defensive team. Uh, now, he has the personnel to be that type of team with this these guys. The message is just not getting through with them for whatever reason. Something has to change. The, the message has to change. The philosophy has to change because it's not getting through to these guys. Brian Winhorst was saying that he's been hearing that now the Wolves are looking for more front court help. Have you, have you been hearing that they're talking about roster adjustments or that they just have to basically get, yeah. get it together within? I mean, they signed a bunch of front court players. Some of them don't even play. Like, Jordan Hill doesn't play. Cole Aldridge sometimes doesn't play. Like, they have all these big guys. I think they're going to look at point guard. You know that's what's the, missing? That's the long term. You know what's missing? Look at point guard. KG. <laughs> a true, a true well, veteran, a, a voice. Not, not his game. I'm saying a voice to be on the bench, to be in a locker room with these guys. They're all 21, 22 they do, years old. I agree with that. Well, they, that I, they do say they miss that. That is for sure. It gets to the issue with Tibbs, right? We all know he is a great coach. Nobody is saying, "Oh gosh, not, not." They're not doing well with one of the best coaches in the NBA. Wouldn't want to hire one of those. It's more about look. You're talking about a pretty significant age gap, generation yes. gap, yes. right? With a young team. 
One of the reasons we thought the Lakers got off to such a good start was because Luke Walton could relate to these guys in a way. I mean, Steve Kerr even thinks young and relates to his guys in sort of a younger way and a new generation kind of coach way. If they had that intermediary in KG, you Maybe. can see the Tibbs method working if there was sort of a middleman there a little bit more. You, you need that. You need his voice. You don't need to just hear your coach's voice because that, that message might not be getting through to the guys. So whereas a KG can be in there around these guys and they respect his voice more than they will the coach. I mean, it's crazy to say, but it is. Well, to quote Rick Patino and by proxy, our I mean, Al Hassan, uh, KG's not walking I'll through walk that door anytime soon, so we'll see door. what happens.